A huge storm will be coming to the United States over the next few days, which will bring a bunch of problems, including the risk of severe weather, with damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes being a possibility. Additionally, a summer heat wave will continue to impact the country, and there is even more brutal heat coming this weekend to much of the United States. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today, and right now we actually have some storms that have been ongoing over the last 24 hours across areas in the central and northern plains and this is just the beginning of a multi-day severe weather event that we will be witnessing across areas like the midwest and the northern plains and on top of that we've had high pressure dominating across the southeast over the last few days which is bringing that record-breaking heat wave but this high pressure system will weaken today which means that we are actually going to have a threat for some significant severe weather including damaging winds and large hail up and down the east coast also back through the southeast where damaging winds and hail again will be the primary concerns with a bunch of storms they're going to be firing off later today. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days beginning with today which is Wednesday and we have two slight risks of severe weather in place. One of which is back over in Iowa, southern Minnesota and Nebraska and then the other one back over in the southeast and a large marginal threat that kind of connects the two across Montana all the way back into Florida where all hazards of severe weather are going to be on the table today but main concern for both regions will be damaging winds, which will be scattered at times between 60 to 70 miles per hour. Large hail is also a possibility, but this is by no means the biggest concern, at least for those in the Midwest or the Northern Plains. If you're back over in the Southeast, though, we may see a few storms, especially the initial storms that produce hail as large as the size of ping pong balls. And then the tornado risk for today is on the lower side of things. We have a low 2% tornado risk across Iowa, Nebraska, and Southern Minnesota. I honestly would not be surprised if we end up seeing a couple tornadoes today, but it's going to be really dependent on storm mode if we have discrete supercells we definitely could see a tornado or two so definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware have multiple ways to receive warnings and if this tornado threat does pan out we may go live so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and then on thursday our threat of severe weather will continue we have three different marginal threats of severe weather we got one in the midwest which is honestly in my opinion the more concerning one as of right now and then another large marginal threat across the southeast and along the mid-atlantic region and then a small one back over in montana overall damaging winds and large hail are going to be the main concerns in all three regions i would not be surprised though if we had a low tornado risk back over in parts of wisconsin southeastern minnesota and also iowa and so far the storm prediction center has not put out any tornado risk for thursday but again i would not be surprised if they introduce one in the next outlook it's going to depend again on storm mode but there will just be enough wind shear for there to be maybe an isolated tornado or two and then on friday our threat of severe weather will mainly be focused across the central and northern plains and this is the beginning of a multi-day severe weather stretch that is going to take place in the central and northern plains in the Midwest as we are expecting more severe weather Saturday and Sunday. This is going to come out of a shortwave trough that'll move over Montana and really the biggest concern on Friday should be very large hail and as well as significant damaging winds but I also would not rule out the potential for a strong tornado or two in this environment as we will have ample amount of wind shear. Also on Saturday and Sunday I would anticipate severe weather will continue across this region and I will make another video and another forecast here in the next couple of days that It'll go way more in detail on this, but I do think this is an area that we need to keep a very close eye on Friday through Sunday. Now let's go day by day with the timing of severe weather beginning with today, which we're not expecting really any storms to fire off until about three or four o'clock this afternoon, mainly back over in central Nebraska, where large hail and damaging winds will be the primary concern initially, but we will quickly transition to more of a damaging wind and tornado risk. And again, the tornado risk is conditional today, and it is a low chance, but I think a tornado or two will be possible, especially out of these initial storms storms that fire off but overall it's going to depend on these being discrete so right around four or five o'clock is when i think this tornado risk may peak and then by around six to seven o'clock this will start to cluster together into a little line of storms that'll move across northeastern nebraska we may also see a couple of small little supercells fire in northern iowa where a tornado or two would be a possibility but again it's going to depend on storms staying discrete in this environment but there will be enough wind shear in place for there to be a tornado or two it's just going to come down to storm mode today by around eight to nine o'clock tonight we're going to still have storms out there but by that point most of the concern is just going to be damaging winds some lightning and also some localized flooding and then as we go into early thursday morning things are starting to dry out a little bit and then thursday afternoon is when we're expecting more storms to fire off but that'll be across parts of the midwest so back over the midwest for today we are expecting again these storms to roll through later this afternoon a few little low top supercells may develop back over in northern iowa with a low tornado risk also a damaging wind threat and then by around eight nine o'clock tonight we'll have some storms out there in central and southern wisconsin if there's any 
any severe weather left over tonight in southern Wisconsin, it would likely just be damaging winds. And then overnight tonight, there will not really be a whole lot of rain. And then by tomorrow around lunchtime and just after lunchtime is when storms will once again fire off a little bit earlier than what we're expecting today in terms of a startup time for these storms. This will happen closer to 12 or 1 in southeastern Minnesota, back into western Iowa. These will initially start off as kind of these popcorn storms, and then they'll eventually turn into more of a cluster of storms as we go later into the afternoon hours. And so damaging winds and hail should be the primary concern, but any of these storms that form initially that are a bit more discreet may at least have a low-end tornado potential during the early to mid-afternoon hours. But by the time these things cluster together by 6 to 7 o'clock, there really will not be much of a tornado risk left over. This line will eventually push into Wisconsin and northern Illinois with isolated damaging winds being the main concern in the late evening hours. And then for the timing in the Ohio Valley and the East Coast for today, we are expecting storms to fire off around 3 to 4 o'clock. A lot of these will be producing downburst damaging winds, and with today's setup, there is a potential for microbursts, which means very localized area of extreme winds as high as 80 to 100 miles per hour. Usually these do not last much more than like 3 or 4 miles, so it's usually a very tiny corridor that this actually happens in. But today's environment is favorable for microbursts, so I do want to point that out if you're back over in the Carolinas or even back through the southeast today. We are going to have a lot of storms out there. Again, a lot of these are just going to be damaging wind and hail producers. There's really not much of a tornado risk here. Back over in the Ohio Valley as well, there will be some damaging wind potential. It'll be a bit lower, though, than what we're going to be seeing down in the southeast. By 7 to 8 o'clock tonight, those storms will continue across the Carolinas and Georgia. And then by around 9 to 10 o'clock tonight, most of the Ohio Valley activity will be dying down. And then a few storms will still be ongoing back over in Georgia and as well as Alabama. So if you're back over in the southeast, again, basically the same story. A bunch of pop-up storms throughout the afternoon. By the early evening, we may see a slightly more organized cluster of storms develop, and that may produce damaging winds as far south as the panhandle of Florida, so including areas near Tallahassee. Then as we go into Thursday morning, those storms will weaken out, and then more storms will fire Thursday afternoon in the same exact region, but the severity of these storms will not be nearly as significant as what they'll be today. And then back over the mid-Atlantic for Thursday, again, a bunch of pop-up storms are again in the forecast. These will be basically moving in different directions, damaging winds, hail, the biggest concerns. Lightning is also a possibility. I do want to point out that lightning is something that can be deadly. We had 18 people struck by lightning yesterday in South Carolina from a random pop-up storm. Luckily, it does not sound like there were any fatalities out of that, but that was in a lake. So just keep in mind that if you have any outdoor activities the next couple of days, make sure that you're taking these storms seriously. And then heading into Friday, our threat of severe weather will likely be much more elevated back over in the northern plains, where significant severe weather is likely to return. Because as we go into the mid to late afternoon hours, we are expecting multiple storms to fire off across North and South Dakota with damaging winds, very large hail, and even a few tornadoes being a possibility. There will be a lot of wind shear up here in the Northern Plains on Friday for the potential here for maybe even a couple of strong tornadoes. So we need to watch Friday very closely, especially if we end up getting discrete supercells, which right now the Rufus model is indicating that there could be several discrete supercells here on Friday. So definitely get ready for that. A severe weather outbreak is in play on Friday, maybe even a localized tornado outbreak. And then eventually during the late evening, we'd likely see these storms cluster together, producing damaging winds all the way into Minnesota. I do not think this is a repeat, by the way, of the derecho that we just had a few days ago, but I do think there are some similar characteristics here, maybe a little bit further back to the west for that tornado threat, and then additionally, I think the damaging wind threat, if we were to get a line of storms, would not be nearly as widespread, but nonetheless, this is definitely a day that we need to be keeping a very close eye on. And then if you want colder weather, you might have to go to Alaska, because unfortunately, the temperatures are going to be staying well above average over the next several days. Another heat wave is in store this weekend for those in the Midwest and across the Great Lakes with above average temperatures very likely in that area. By early to mid next week, temperatures will start to get a little bit more balanced across the Great Plains and back through the East Coast. We may see heat, another heat wave, though, back over in the Northern Plains by the middle and end of next week, just in time for the 4th of July. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. Temperatures for Wednesday currently forecasted to be in the upper 90s and low 100s all across the East Coast, even with thunderstorms likely this afternoon. It does not matter. It is still going to be very hot out there. Back over in the Northern Plains, the upper Midwest, there is some relief. Upper 60s and low 70s for high temperatures in many areas, which is very nice for this time of the year. And then on Saturday, which is obviously a few days from now, we are expecting that heat to build again back over in the Midwest, where most areas will reach the low 90s again. And even some areas like Texas will skyrocket into the upper 90s. And then if you're back over in the Northeast, areas like Maine will only be in the 50s and 60s, which after the 100s that we've been dealing with over the last few days, that is some serious relief as we go into this weekend. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. I said yesterday, we
we would not have a video today and guess what we had a video today and honestly it looks like we may have videos every single day for the next few days assuming that the severe weather pattern continues to stay very active which right now Friday Saturday Sunday look like they could be some big days across the northern plains even the central plains and back into the midwest so make sure you subscribe to the channel click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates there is once again a chance for a live stream today a low chance tomorrow and then the chances are much higher Friday through Sunday so stay tuned we'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.